So I wanted to start this out with my actual current greeter. This is how I have it set up. I'm using the Aether uh, theme, and I just wanted to show you kind of where I stand on this. I love this setup. It looks beautiful. It's slick. It's elegant. It looks better than Windows to me. It's just overall just an awesome feel. So I'm going to log in here, and then we're going to start in on the configuration and installation. Now, I want to start out on ChrisTitus.com. This right here is the light DM configuration page. I'm still uh, tweaking up a little bit, finishing up some of the final pieces, but you'll be able to follow along. Everything I'm doing in this video is notated here so you can easily copy and paste commands. I have both Debian based and Arch based commands, so you can easily do that. Any links to where I got this information like the Ubuntu, Arch Wiki or Debian Wiki is all right here as well, directly to the light DM pages, so you can go to those. So cross-reference, I'm gonna start doing this for all my tutorial guides as I really think this is a valuable resource and it doesn't take me very long now that I've actually upgraded my website to where I can do this type of walkthrough in usually about 15 to 30 minutes. So with that, if you have anything, you get lost, you need to actually follow along at all, definitely check this article, christitus.com, and it's just forward slash light DM dash configuration. So with that said, let's jump into the actual configuring, getting everything going. We're gonna start with the installation. Okay, to start out with, we need to disable our current display manager. So to do this, we need to go sudo system control, disable, and then your display manager. Now for GNOME, it would be GDM, if you're on KDE, it's SDDM. And uh, there's other ones out there, but for the most part, these are the two you probably should know about. If you have another uh, one, a lot of times they're already on light damage, what I use. So after you disable your current display manager, you need to install. Make sure you don't reboot during this process either. So we would just do yay S and then do light DM for mine, but uh, if you're on a different package like Ubuntu, it'd be just apt install light DM. Once you have light DM installed, you would do a sudo system control enable light DM. Now we're not starting the service, we're just enabling it on startup. So we've only disabled our current one and enabled this one, but the services in the background are still the same. So we just go ahead and hit enable, and then we need to configure light DM. So let's get into that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch user over to root and go into etc light DM. From here, if we do a listing, you'll notice a couple config files. Now I have a couple greeters installed here, but by default, you'll see the GTK greeter, uh, and then the, you might install another one, you might see another comp file. But the one file we absolutely need to change is the lightdm.comp file. And from here, I wanna just kinda of overview this comp file just so it makes more sense for you. It always starts off with this top section is all commented out, it just tells you what each thing is. Now, personally, I don't change anything in this first section where it says lightdm. You'll see the brackets, this indicates a section start. So I don't really ever do anything in the lightdm section. Next is seat configuration. Again, don't ever uncomment or remove one of these hash signs uh, out of here uh, because this will actually give you a lot of problems. So um, if we go down, you'll see that seat, this is actually the start of the next section. All this was just telling you what each one does. Now, I'm not going to go over every single one of these options as there's really only a couple that I use, but I want to go ahead and specify the ones that I do use. So. Uh, let's go ahead, go down, and the first thing I change is my greeter session. Now, you can leave this as default and not change anything, but overall, light DM out of the gate's a little ugly. I like the WebKit 2 greeter, but I've also used uh, Slick Greeter, which is a Canonical's uh, light DM package. Both are really good. Both look very, very pretty out of the box, um, but, you know, pick your poison on this. When you do install these greeters, I'll get into in a second, uh, you can pick your, your actual greeters uh, by just doing an APT install, you know, light DM slick greeter or light DM WebKit 2 greeter. Uh, these packages are available there as well. With greeter session done, you can actually change the look and feel of it. Now, I'm gonna log out here in a second and show you what the actual greeter looks like and then log back in and we'll switch this around from WebKit 2 to Slick. 
and go from that. And uh, actually, we'll go ahead and do it right now and start with Slick Greeter and then go to uh, WebKit too. Now, our user session, this is my desktop environment. User session, awesome. I use Awesome Window Manager, but if you're using like KDE, you could do KDE. You could do whatever you need into here. It works with pretty much every single desktop environment out there. Uh, so I love LightDM just because of its versatility. Now there's one more section I really like to do is display setup script. Now some people like to configure their displays with the desktop environment. I hate this as I'm constantly switching desktop environments and I really like my displays to go a certain way. I have uh, multiple monitors and, and certain monitors use certain refresh rates and you can set up just all kinds of really cool stuff uh, just with a basic setup script. Now I've gone in a past video and gone over just editing X uh, the X config uh, directly in ETC, which wouldn't rely on any display manager. It would actually set it up properly the first time around. But if you have problems with that XOR comp file, and I'll link up in the video if you want to go that level. But the next level would be your display manager right here. And I did a, a specific setup script on this one as I was having problems getting my uh, XORG.config file properly done. Other notable things here is auto login. You can go ahead and say, hey, auto login using this user account and set all this up. If you don't mind sacrificing security to have some convenience, you can use auto login. Now, down here towards the bottom, there's one more thing that I want to go over, and that's VNC server. Uh, a lot of people like to remotely access their system. Now, if you do enable VNC server here, it does use Tiger VNC, so you can install the Tiger VNC package uh, using either apt install Tiger VNC or Pacman Tiger VNC for, for Arch users. And basically, you just hit true here, uh, package, and we'll go ahead and actually go ahead and enable this real fast. We'll do enabled command x b and c port 5900 i'm going to leave listen address commented out as it should default uh, to all my network connections i can specify the actual width and height of this so let's go ahead and do that i don't want 8-bit desktop it looks super ugly and we'll go ahead and just make this 1920 instead of having a box so with that, we would actually have a proper VNC. Now, it doesn't allow insecure connections, which is a good thing. So it's not going to just open up 5900. So you're not going to be able to go to another box in your network and just be able to VNC directly in this under 5900. You would first need to establish a SSH tunnel to this box and then do a port forward when you're establishing that tunnel. Now, this is a kind of a complex setup as far as establishing that. It's not too bad, but at the same time, it is a little bit uh, more difficult than you could than you would imagine. So uh, I'll, I'll probably touch on this and, and go over SSHing using port forwarding uh, in a separate video to utilize, like let's say, a VNC server like this setup here. So I just wanted to kind of touch on that. A lot of people get confused when doing VNC on Linux as it's a little more secure by default uh, and requires usually an SSH tunnel along with the VNC server. So with these changes done, let's go ahead into our work session and we're just going to log out. Now you'll see right here, this is actually the WebKit 2. Uh, I probably needed to restart the service, um, but it's kind of cool. So here you can do random or you can specify your background that you like and close that out. So it gives you kind of a nice, nice little aesthetic. That's why I kind of like this one. And you just click in here, you can change your username. If, if there was other users on here, you can change your actual desktop environment right here to where I could do uh, mate or mate, and then I could also do Cody as a desktop environment as well. So very cool. I use Awesome Window Manager, so I just come in here, log in, and it spits me right on my desktop. Now, I'm going to go ahead and restart that uh, light DM service as we did change a setting in there. So let's go ahead and go into here and just do sudo system control restart light DM. And this will actually spit us to the, the actual login screen as well. And you'll notice now we have like this all black slick theme. So this is a little bit different. This is the slick greeter that we changed in our comp file. Now it was remembering WebKit 2 because we didn't restart the service or you could do a reboot as well and you'd still get this. This would be all the desktop environments. Now 
the theming here I need to probably work on a bit as I use a dark theme and with this it, it is a little bit hard to read so uh, I'd probably need to go through here and change like the background and, and lighten it up a bit okay now that we're back on the desktop let's go ahead and switch that back to WebKit too so we'll just do a sudo nano etc light dm and then light dm.com and from here we'll just go down to our greeter session now i'll go ahead and comment this out and then uncomment this so removing these little hash signs kind of enables that function and then just make sure that the value is set properly which that's fine so i could actually remove this as I don't really like Slick Greeter. I like WebKit 2 a lot better. So, uh, But there's a lot of different greeters out there. You can kind of tinker around and install the ones you like to see on your system and, and, and just kind of play with it and see what you like as far as the greeters go. Now, there is some more configuration we could do. We could add more backgrounds to this. So uh, let's go ahead, switch over, and go to ETC Light DM. And if we go into the Light DM... WebKit 2 greeter. The, so there's actually two comp files. There's the main one, which most people just use that, specify their user session because that kind of says their default dis desktop environment. And then also they specify, hey, use this greeter. And most people just stick with the stock settings, but there are some cool things you can do. And the stuff you can do varies from greeter to greeter. I find WebKit 2 just extremely powerful because you can do all kinds of really cool stuff, screen savers, uh, theming. This is just a really kind of cool thing. And like, if I wanted to add a background, I could easily go to USR share backgrounds and drop a uh, actual background in there. So that would be pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and do that real fast. Go over and we'll just drop a, a file into that folder. So, so let's copy Twitch banner.jpg over into USR share backgrounds. Um, this will copy that over there. And then we can exit this and log out and you'll see this new background. So let's go in work session and log out. All right, so let's see if we can find that new background I dropped in there. So if you look in USR share backgrounds, there it is. So boom, I could stare at my own <laughs> ugly mug <laughs> logging in. Uh, so I probably will actually add some other backgrounds in there as I don't really want that as my login screen. But you get the idea. You can drop any uh, actual image directly in there and use it for your background, which is great. Very, very powerful. And that was Light DM, an absolute essential tool. Uh, with any Linux box or Linux install I do, I usually am using Light DM just because I love it that much. Uh, as you get in there and you start editing this comp file, you'll figure out, oh my God, there's this and this and this and this. There's so much I didn't cover in this video. I just wanted to get the basics, which most of these will cover 99% of the people out there, but there's some other little cool nuances and options you can do, and it's all just kind of laid out in their comp file, and you don't need to go to a wiki to get this. All of it is just simply reading it and go, oh, okay, I can use that and enable, like, let's say, auto login, which I didn't really cover too much in depth on this video. So... With that, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.